Nothing says timeless like brown, it would seem. Certainly an old wooden crate like this definitely feels timeless. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And today I'm lighting and making a timeless male portrait. And I say making because the timeless thing comes from three parts. There is the lighting, which we'll get to. There is the styling, which is really important. And I'm gonna use the same lighting, but change the look by changing the styling in three ways. And also, in my case, some post-processing, and I'll get to that right at the end. But for now, I think what I need to do is get another light in, maybe two. I'll find some props that are gonna go with this. So let's get a light set, let's get a model in, let's get shooting. To help me out today, I've got the amazing Jared. Jared's gonna be the model for this photo session, and the first picture I'm gonna take is actually a picture without any lights firing whatsoever. So, my camera settings for this. I'm gonna be at a flash sync speed of 250th of a second, although yours might be slightly different, F8 for a good depth of field, and ISO 200, the native ISO for my particular camera, and the most important picture is this. No flash, no picture. Now you might think I'm gonna start with the lighting, but actually for this timeless look, it's more important to get the styling right. So right around the back, I've got this background from Manfrotto. It has a nice texture, but more importantly, a color palette that kind of fits in with the look and feel that I'm, I'm really going for. And that's complemented by Jared. So he's bought this amazing suit along that fits in perfectly, really looks awesome. The lighting, well, I'm gonna do that backwards because what I want is the look of one giant light just off to the side here, but I don't have room in my small home studio. So I'm actually gonna achieve that with three lights, starting by setting up this giant light in the background, which we do have room for back here. And this is just gonna be a fill light. Now we know we've got control of the shadows. All I want this light to do is fill those shadows with a little bit of light. I've metered it out so it's two stops under where I'm actually photographing. Okay, Jared, here we go. Quick little test photo, and you can see we've got something, but we haven't got a lot. But that's all I need. That is just gonna put some light into the shadows, and I can build from there. So the second light in my three light, one light setup is this one back here. And this light's job is simply to put some light on Jared's hair and his shoulder. Now I've positioned it slightly behind Jared because I don't want any of the light to reach his face. We're gonna put a third light in for that. I've also put a grid on it because I don't want any of the light to reach the background. I wanna keep that separate for the next light. I've metered this out, so once again, it's two stops under where I'm actually photographing. So it meters for F4, I'm working at F8. Let's take a test photo like this, see what we get. Here we go, Jared. Now I've turned off the fill light, so this is just that hair light. And you can see that it's putting a little bit of light on Jared's shoulder and a little bit on his hair. So the third light of my one light look is this one. It's a Flashpoint Explore 100. This has been set for F8, which is the actual exposure we're photographing at. Let's take a test photo using just that light. Here we go. And this looks like a proper photo. We've got good light on Jared. We've got catch lights in his eyes. We've got light on the background, which is why I'm not using a grid with this light. And yet, when you add in the other lights, you can see how it changes and lightens the shadows. So even in the darkest shadow of this picture, I still have some detail, and that's really important. So that's the basic lighting setup, and it's not actually going to change for the rest of this session. What is gonna change is the extra styling that we're gonna to give to Jared to work with, so some props and bits and pieces. But for now, well, this is set up, so let's take a few photos like this. Jared, are you ready? Here we go. Usually I'm trying to get everything right in camera as much as I possibly can, but I find the best post-processing techniques are the ones that are planned from the beginning. For the second styling look, you'll notice 
a few things have changed. So we've got Jared sat on a box rather than on a stool, so he's a little lower down. Now, because he's slightly lower down, I've just slightly lowered the height of the two lights here, the key light and the hair light, but I haven't really changed their position and I definitely haven't changed their power. I have added a fourth light of sorts, which is just a light bulb. This fits in with the whole vintage theme. We've got this nice vintage cord. It's a timeless feel, but to get this to work, I might have to change one of my exposure settings, specifically shutter speed. Let me show you why. So here we go, same settings as before. Let's just take a quick little test photo, see what we get. I think this is gonna be a vertical picture. I have a vertical feel for this, I think. And that works okay, but it's the bulb I'm interested in. I can see that the bulb is turned on, but it doesn't really glow like a light bulb. So to make that work, I need to change my shutter speed. Open the shutter for longer, so more of this light bulb light will be recorded. There's a downside to that. Let me show you what that is. So I'm gonna change my shutter speed to a 60th of a second. I'll take roughly the same picture again. The light bulb has become much brighter, but somehow the lighting on Jared has changed. And that is because we've got really bright lights so you can see this video. So I'm gonna to need to turn those off for the rest of this shoot. So if we turn those lights off, yeah, everything gets a little bit darker, but it's gonna make my picture much better. So now I'm back in control. I have the more contrasty lighting and I have that glow from the bulb. All in all, this is pretty good. So I think we should take a few photos like this. Jared, are you ready? Oh. Away we go. Oh. The props in this session are probably the most underappreciated part. I mean, they give everything a look and a story, but more importantly, it just helps Jared to work with them and create some different poses. Oh. Oh. For the third styling look, I've changed things around again and I've got Jared sat even lower down, which means I need to put the light even lower down as well, but I'm still trying to keep everything in roughly the same position. But now because Jared is that much lower, you need to think about yourself as a photographer and your height. So if I take a picture of Jared sat down there and I'm standing up here, here we go. Let's take a quick little test photo. It doesn't look good. It looks like I'm a, a giant towering over Jared. In reality, it's the other way around. So what I'm going to do is actually get myself lower down. I'm gonna make use of the camera's flippy foldy screen and I'm gonna bring myself down to Jared's eye height, in fact, slightly below his eye height. But this time, everything just feels in proportion. And that's something to remember. If you drop your model down, make sure you get down as well. Get down. So everything is set for our last styling setup. So Jared, are you ready? Okay, here we go. The setup pictures and the back of the camera shots, they are literally what comes out of the camera, but the final pictures have been post-processed and I think that's what we should cover next. Here in Photoshop, I'm gonna make a duplicate layer and apply my color toning to that using Filter Camera Raw. And you could use Lightroom because Lightroom and Camera Raw are basically the same in this instance. I'm gonna go for the color grading first of all, I think, and apply some shadow changes. So for the shadows, I know we've got detail in the shadows, but I also wanna make sure there are no true blacks anywhere, not even close. So I'm gonna increase my luminance to around about 80. My saturation, a little bit more saturation, maybe just 15 on the saturation, and the hue, well, let's put that at 180. So now my shadows have that sort of teal color to them, but they're also a little bit more saturated and there are no blacks anywhere. The highlights, I'm gonna do something similar. I wanna just change the highlights. I'm gonna actually increase the highlights to 25, and then I'm gonna put maybe a lot more saturation in the highlights, but the color needs to be, well, sort of, similar to what it would normally be, but warmer. So I've gone with this sort of orangey color at 45 degrees. 
The whole thing does feel like it needs a few more extra changes because it's a timeless look. You've got to put vignetting in, haven't you? I mean, classic cameras definitely vignette, modern lenses very rarely do. So that's that. And then personal taste, I think it's all a bit flat and dark as a result of the changes. So let's increase the brightness, increase the contrast, but make sure that I don't get anything in those black end of the histogram. That looks absolutely fine. Click OK, and that's basically the changes done. Now I could stop there, but this is a male portrait. It needs something a bit more gritty. So let's add a gritty, grainy texture to that. We'll just pop it over the top and change the layer blending mode from normal to soft light. Drop the opacity down, probably 75, something like that. And there you go. There it is. There is my timeless male portrait completed. As I said right at the beginning of this video, the timeless feel is a combination of the lighting, the styling, and the post-processing. And you can change, ignore, or alter anything that I've done and create your own version. If you want to get your hands on exactly the same texture that I used for your post-processing, I'll leave a link in the video description down below. Whilst you're there, check out the gear list as well for all of the equipment I've used in this video. And leave me a comment, even just a thumbs up or an emoji. It all helps with the algorithm. Click on the bell icon and you'll never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. And of course, if you haven't already done so, click on that subscribe button. But just the once is plenty. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.